If you anticipate interviewing for an internship or full-time position in investment banking, equity research, or other competitive fields in finance, one of the questions you're likely to see is, walk me through a DCF, meaning discounted cash flow analysis. This question is typically asked towards the middle of interviews as an intermediate question once you have answered questions such as, walk me through the three statements, and what are the four main valuation methodologies? There will be two parts to this video. The first is a conceptual review of the topic. We'll walk you through the basics of a DCF and how you derive an enterprise value. We'll do this primarily using the DCF valuation model that participants build in our financial modeling certification program, or otherwise known as the FMC program. The second part of this video will be to walk you through some tips on how to answer this question in an interview setting. Having a solid understanding of the topic at hand and successfully answering an interview question are related, but not necessarily the same thing. The basic concept behind a discounted cash flow analysis is that a company is worth the present value of its future cash flows. All valuation methods are important, but what really matters is how much in real cash flow it generates in the future. A DCF follows the concept of time value of money, which says that money today is worth more than money tomorrow because you could always invest money today, earn interest on it, and end up with more in the future. Here we show the equation for time value of money or the present value, which is equal to the future value divided by one plus the discount rate raised to the term or year. We need to use a discounting rate to account for the cost, which we typically do with the weighted average cost of capital or WAC. Looking at the first equation on the slide here, we have a present value of 82.65, and we multiply that by one plus the discount rate of 10% and raise it to the second power, which is saying that we are growing the cash flows at 10% for two years. And you can see our future value equals $100. Reversely, if we have $100, which is a future value, and we use our present value equation from above, we will discount two years of cash flows to the present value using a 10% discount rate. You must memorize and truly understand this formula as it's the foundation of a DCF. The first step of a DCF is to build out the projection period, which is a stream of free cash flows typically over the next five to 10 year period. Before we go any further though, let's define free cash flow. Unlevered free cash flow is free cash flow to all stakeholders, which excludes net interest expense. This is best used in correlation with enterprise value. And then there's levered free cash flow, which is free cash flow to only equity holders, which includes net interest expense. This is best used in correlation with equity value. For the sake of this example, we'll talk about unlevered free cash flow based on the fact that we are interested in enterprise value. We project these cash flows as you can see here, starting with revenue and walk down through expenses, taxes, and other adjustments, and then we discount them and add them up. But now, how do we think about how much our cash flows are worth beyond the fifth year or projection period? What we just covered in the previous slide was the projection period. For the second part of the DCF, we need to calculate terminal value, which is the value of the cash flows after the projection period. One scenario is with an asset with finite cash flows, such as a machine. In this circumstance, cash flow would end after the projection period, negating the need to calculate a terminal value. Companies tend to operate well beyond a projection period, so you have to account for the cash flow that comes after the projection period. There are two general approaches to this, the perpetuity growth method and the EBITDA exit multiple method. We will start with the perpetuity growth method. In this method, we are assuming that the company keeps operating indefinitely or into perpetuity and that its cash flows grow at a constant rate. The terminal growth rate should always be very low less than or equal to the country's GDP growth rate or the rate of inflation. Because in theory, if you claimed a growth rate of let's say 8% and the US economy typically grows at 2%, you would be saying at one point in time, our company would be larger than the whole economy. The second method for finding the terminal value is the EBITDA exit multiple method. This method assumes a value at the end of the projection period based on a multiple. Think about it this way, the company has $100 million in EBITDA in year 5 of the projection period, and you take a look at the comparable company set and the average is 10 times EBITDA. 
You would imply that the terminal value or the far future value is a billion dollars by multiplying your EBITDA by the EBITDA multiple. This is more commonly used in practice as it considers market conditions. You need to discount the future terminal value that you get from both the perpetuity growth method and the EBITDA exit multiple method. So the $1 billion valuation we just discussed would be the terminal value at the end of the projection period or in year five. You would then need to discount the $1 billion back by five years in order to arrive at the present value of the terminal value. Once you have discounted both your projection period and terminal value, you add them together to get your enterprise value. We are now going to put this into practice by walking through a DCF model in Excel. This particular model is from our financial modeling certification program, where we take you through every step to build a DCF from scratch. This step of the course comes after you build a three statement model, comparable companies analysis, precedent transactions analysis, and WAC from scratch. We are going to take a deep dive into the mechanics behind a DCF and how you build one in Excel. Let's start with the projection period here. The first step is hard coding the years or length of your projection period. It's most common to use a five year projection period. From here, let's walk through our unlevered free cash flow. You would start with revenue, then subtract out operating expenses to get to operating income. Then we tax effect our EBIT by subtracting out taxes to get to tax affected EBIT. Now comes the important considerations of unlevered free cash flow. We add back depreciation given the fact that it is a non-cash charge, then we account for the change in working capital. If assets increase by more than liabilities, this is negative, otherwise it's positive. Then we subtract out capital expenditures because it represents an outflow of cash. Now that we have walked down to our unlevered free cash flow, it's time to discount. You can see here we have our discount rate, which is 7.7%. This is also known as the weighted average cost of capital, which is approximated based on our firm's market value of debt and equity. The formula to discount our cash flows is as follows. The present value is equal to the future value divided by one plus the discount rate raised to the number of years. So in practice, when we open up the cell, you can see that we divide our unlevered free cash flow by one plus the discount rate and then cell reference the respective year we laid out at the top of the sheet. And then to finish, we take the sum of the present value of the cash flows. Moving down to the terminal value, we will begin with the perpetuity growth method. The first thing that you want to do is cell reference both the sum of the present value of the projection period and the final year's free cash flow. Recall how we talked about assuming an appropriate growth rate. 2% here is a fair number because we are assuming that this company grows on pace with the US economy which is a logical assumption. Now, one of the more important parts of the perpetuity growth section is the formula to find the terminal value, which is the final year free cash flow number from the projection period multiplied by one plus the growth rate divided by the discount rate minus the growth rate. This formula is very important and something that you should have memorized and an understanding of before you interview. Oftentimes a follow-up question may be, what is the formula for the perpetuity growth method? Next, we are going to discount the terminal value by one plus the discount rate raised to the fifth year or the end of our projection period. Then last but not least, we are going to add together the present value of the projection period and terminal value to reach our final enterprise value number. Now, moving over to the EBITDA exit multiple method, Again, we want to sell reference the sum of the present value of the projection period, as well as the final year of the projection period EBITDA number. Now we calculate our terminal value by multiplying our EBITDA by our multiple. It's that simple. Again, just as we did for the perpetuity method, we're going to discount our terminal value and then add it to the present value of our projection period to reach an enterprise value number. And with that, we've completed our in-depth Excel walkthrough. Let's move on to how to answer this question in an interview. Given the fact that we just went through a conceptual review, as well as an Excel walkthrough, you're probably feeling comfortable with the concept of a DCF. However, be cautious that just knowing the concept or answer isn't always enough, and there is a gap between knowledge and actually answering the question well. You'll need to practice this concept and walk through a DCF numerous times before it is interview ready. 
While there is not one specific way to answer this question, I'm going to share a version of how you can potentially answer this question in an interview. However, be aware that there just isn't one way to answer this question, and you can deviate from this approach if needed. A DCF is an intrinsic valuation method that values a company based on the present value of its future cash flows. We begin by projecting out unlevered free cash flow because unlevered free cash flow represents a cash flow to all stakeholders. First, you project out a company's financials starting with revenue, then you subtract out operating expenses to get to EBIT. Then you tax effect EBIT by multiplying EBIT by one minus the tax rate. Then add back depreciation, account for the changes in working capital, and subtract capital expenditures. Then discount the cash flows to the present value by using a discount rate, typically the WAC and then add them together. Then move on to the terminal value, which is calculated through both the perpetuity growth method and the EBITDA exit multiple method. Once you arrive at a terminal value for each method, you discount it as well, and then add it to the present value of the projection period to arrive at your enterprise value. You should be ready to dive into much more detail, but also be thoughtful around using time wisely and letting them guide you into how much detail they want to hear. A good general time frame to answer this question is 60 to 90 seconds, but that doesn't mean you can't provide a great answer in 45 seconds or two minutes. It's just a general guideline.